that Kim Porter was claiming that her and Diddy would have these threesomes with men all the time, right? And what and what Diddy would do is he'd be hanging out with Kim and some dude, and he'd be like, "Yeah, my girl hella fine, right? I bet you can't make her come faster than me." And that would sort of be like the intro to that. Situation. Today, we're plunging into the dramatic and controversial world of P. Diddy, who is now facing a staggering 99-year prison sentence. This revelation is not just about a fallen music mogul, but also about a cascade of allegations ranging from misconduct to involvement in historic unsolved cases. I am the f hardest hustler in the world! This is Savage Part 2! Don't tell me about sh It's 2022 and I'm still a savage! Whatever I want, I get whatever I want, I in November 2023, singer Cassie Ventura filed a federal lawsuit against her former partner, Sean Diddy Combs, alleging severe physical and sexual abuse throughout their relationship. The lawsuit claimed that Combs' abuse included beating Ventura, forcing her to have sex with other men, and raping her at her home in 2018. Combs settled the lawsuit within a day, but the allegations sparked a wave of accusations against him. Three women and one man subsequently sued Combs, accusing him of a variety variety of abuses including sexual harassment, rape, non-consensual pornography, and sex trafficking. BFM News said, US singer Cassie Ventura and Sean Diddy Combs have settled a lawsuit a day after she accused the musician of rape, abuse, and sex trafficking. She alleged that Diddy abused her for a decade, starting when she was 19 and he was 37. As we go into detail and about Diddy and these allegations and what people have said about Diddy and, and, and a lot of the gossip speculation around Diddy. It, it just what type of man rises to this type of power within this industry? If the only way it can be explained is like, this has to be a criminal organization. If, if someone as rotten as these allegations make Diddy seem, I, I just don't know if you can rule and rise up in any industry for 20 some odd years unless it's a criminal organization, unless it has some sort of evil, wicked plot. And so I just want to refresh your memory a little bit about the Cassie Ventura. She was the 19-year-old girl. Diddy was 37 at the time. Diddy signs her to a 10-album deal uh, when she doesn't have the type of resume that would c command some sort of 10 album deal. And plus, it's just like a bad deal for her. 10 albums? What if she becomes a superstar? But regardless, she claims that, you know, when she was 21, I think on her 21st birthday, Diddy tried to rape her. She fought him off, but he later drugged her with ecstasy and other drugs and uh, raped her, beat her, sexually abused her, and then started passing her around. The, according to the allegations in her lawsuit, there were things called freak offs where Diddy would bring in male prostitutes and he would sit in a corner and watch them have sex with Cassie Ventura. This lawsuit, I think Cassie's now in her 30s, but this lawsuit settled within 48 hours after filing. That's pretty unusual. Another complaint by Joy Dickerson Neal claimed that Combs drugged and sexually assaulted her, recording the assault and showing it to others. A fourth lawsuit filed by an anonymous Jane Doe accused Combs and his associates of gang raping her at his recording studio when she was just 17. Jason Willock said Cassie Ventura's lawsuit against City of Sexual Exploitation was settled in less than 48 hours. I don't know what kind of check he wrote, but Diddy settled that real quick. That's pretty unusual. Tom's former producer and videographer, Rodney Lil Rod Jones, also filed a lawsuit alleging sexual harassment, drugging, and threats by Combs, and that he recorded hundreds of hours of footage of illegal activities at Combs properties, including drug use, sexual assault, and solicitation of sex workers. The suit also named several other defendants, including Combs' son, Justin, and former associates. Hello, everyone. Um, until further notice, I would not be performing at any gigs or anything like that um, for security reasons. My family, friends, and everyone close to me just feels like there's a lot of potential threats and everybody's just telling me what he's allegedly capable of and, you know, 
it's very scary um, for myself and, you know, it has me worried about my kids and, you know, just sleeping with anxiety and, and different things like that. So just moving forward, um, just want to pause on everything until we know that it's, it's, it's clear and safe for me to come back outside of work. I appreciate uh, you all for your love and support and everybody that knows me, etc. Thank you so much. Love. Now, the untimely death of Kim Porter in November 2018 has cast a long shadow over the entertainment industry, enveloped in mystery and suspicion. Officially attributed to pneumonia, the circumstances surrounding her passing have not said well with many close to her, leading to persistent questions and theories about the involvement of her former partner, Sean Combs, or Diddy. Kim Porter, a model and actress, was well-loved by her community. Known for her vibrant personality and devoted motherhood, her sudden death at the age of 47 left her family, friends, and fans in profound shock. And I called her, I'm like, what's up? And I remember she was like, I'm so sick. And that's how she sounded on the phone. And I was like, Kim, why do you sound like that? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. seriously? Spiritual death, like some went down. Like I felt like whatever weird was in him was in her. I'm telling you, if she came over to my house 50 times, 50 of those 50 times her phone was blowing up and it was him. This was constantly. So this is, they're not, they're not together though at this point. They're right? not together, but it was almost like they were together. I didn't like the dynamic of what I was seeing. Like I knew that it was causing her pain, basically. It's not like you have this partner that like treats you like shit and then you move on. It's like you have this partner that treats you like shit and won't let you move on. Like if, if she was seeing somebody and he got a whiff of that, somehow she wouldn't be seeing that person anymore. And it wasn't based on something she did. It was based on something he would do. Like, there was not a chance in the world that she was going to be able to get married, be with another man, be it, just not a chance in the world. Like, it was never going to happen. So I was under the impression, like, oh, okay, he must be giving her a ton of money. And then when I realized mm -hmm. that, like, half of the jewels that she had weren't bought by him. You know, Kim was, a, like, a, she was a lady. Like I said, she was old-fashioned, southern, cooked breakfast in the morning, feed the kid, you know? And I didn't like that he would almost like booty call her. And I knew she didn't want to be with his ass. Like he'd booty call her. And it's like, and if she didn't show up, like the lights were not going to be on the next day. He'd broken her down so much that if she didn't, she honestly felt like she was going to be destitute. And before I say this, I don't believe this. Okay. And I'll explain why. I don't want to be hit with defamation or whatever else, but this is what I got approached with. Let me be clear. I don't believe it, but I got approached with this. And they said, yo, we got this guy who has Kim Porter's manuscripts before she died. So she was writing a book allegedly, and this guy has whatever. We've heard about allegations. 50 of that pages existence. of this manuscript, right? So I had my assistant uh, reach out and, you know, speak to them on my behalf, just to kind of, you know, kick the tires, see what it's about. This is what they said in the manuscript. They said that this is what they claim are in the manuscript. And once again, I have no idea. I don't even believe this, but this is what they're saying. This is the kind of stuff that's floating around. They said that in this manuscript, the, that Kim Porter was claiming that her and Diddy would have these threesomes with men all the time, right? And what, and what Diddy would do is he'd be hanging out with Kim and some dude and he'd be like, yeah, my girl hella fine, right? I bet you can't make her come faster than me. And that would sort of be like the intro to that situation. And allegedly in this transcript- A freak-off competition? Yeah, I don't know. This nigga done turned to an Olympic sport. <laughs> <laughs> She's crazy. <laughs> and apparently in this manuscript, which, which I don't come. believe is even true, they're saying that Diddy tried Diddy try this with Tupac, and Tupac was like, nah, I'm good, and he walked out. And that was some of the animosity. Nah, between... Tupac would have been rapped about that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, what else? What else was in the manuscript? Uh, they're saying how Diddy always uh, hated Tupac because of this, and when he found out that Pac was coming to the studio, he hit, you know, he called Jimmy Henchman and let him know that he was there. 
and that's how Tupac got shot. And he was also, um, Biggie and Tupac were actually cool and were about to form a label together and Diddy was so mad that he pulled uh, Biggie security the night he got killed, right? So I went and talked, you know, I have connections to Tupac's crew, right? I've done enough Tupac, I've done more Tupac stuff than anybody, so I have connections to his people. R&B singer, AI, be sure, the father of Border's eldest son, was among the most vocal publicly disputing the official cause of death. He suggested that foul play was involved, a claim that brought him a significant amount of attention and, curiously, led to his severe illness and a two-month coma shortly thereafter. This series of events diverted public and media attention from his allegations, adding another layer layer of intrigue to the already mysterious circumstances. Mr. Troublesome tweeted, ALB, sure, is sure about expose P. Diddy for killing Kim Porter and trying to kill him. Whitney Houston's death, who was a beloved singer with an illustrious career, tragically passed away on February 11, 2012. The official cause of her death was drowning in a hotel tub, with heart disease and cocaine use listed as contributing factors. However, Suga said, Whitney Houston tried to give Brandy a letter, and Whitney admitted in original video that they tried to drown me. Again, ironically, Whitney Houston passed away on Brandy's birthday, which was February 11th, where she posted some pictures, including Diddy, who was there. With Whitney, Milagro said, In a harrowing detail, Jane Doe described how Sean Combs, or Diddy, demanded that she pinch his nipples throughout the attack to help him get off, then pulled up a chair to watch her being raped and choked by his associates. The Jane Doe suing Diddy for sexual assault is a public figure and Diddy's people feel as though her identity will be revealed if documents aren't sealed before a motion. The comms defendant requests this relief only for so long as the motion is subdued. If the court denies plaintiff's motion, the comms defendants submit that the opposition brief should be unsealed and made part of the public docket. If it is granted, then it should remain sealed in the court's discretion. This document, given by Doe v. Comms, says, On December 11, 2023, plaintiff moved for entry of an order permitting her to proceed anonymously as a Jane Doe, the motion. Although the comms defendants are opposing the motion, they seek to seal defendants. Memorandum of law in opposition to plaintiff's motion to proceed anonymously. The opposition brief, out of an abundance of caution. My focus right now is Sean Combs. Okay, tell us why, tell us why. Because he's a sex trafficker. Okay. And he's using music and entertainment to sex traffic. Now, is this is this just boys, girls, adults, kids? Like, it I mean, from what I've heard from sources that I would consider reliable, it really doesn't matter. Wow. Um, I don't think sexuality is something that has anything to do with gender at this point for Sean. I, I honestly think he's just an extreme narcissist who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor who loved to control people. And his mentor was Andre Lavelle. Tell, tell us how he was, was mentored by Clyde Davis. Oh, oh God. And don't tell me that Andre Harrell got touched by Clive Davis too. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened between Andre and, and, and Clive. What I do know is that Andre got passed over. Like, how do you go from being the president of Uptown and losing your entire company to your intern? Like, Puff started out as an intern. Yes, he was he throwing parties with Mark Barnes in Washington, D.C. And then he became an intern at Uptown. And he was very, you know, proactive. And in, 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 if there's one thing that Sean knows, he knows pop culture. Last question. I asked you to do this earlier, but I just want you to do it even more and go detail. What do you predict will happen next in the future? You, you know, it's like you see it before it happens. Kathy White's true killer is going to be unveiled. And it's not a man. And that woman died screaming. Show him the tape, Diddy. You got it.
What does the future hold for Pete Diddy? Are these allegations an echo of a much darker reality in the entertainment industry? Keep watching us until you find with us the truth. Goodbye.